good morning, everyone. What do you think? Thank you, ladies. Thank you, ladies. And you also gave me one of my spirit animals. So you know the penguin is truly my spirit animal. And I will tell you why. I'm going to say why now, Jim. <laughs> the reason why I've, that I consider the penguin to be my spirit animal is because these guys are really tough animals. They put up with some of the most awful weather that the earth can throw at any living creature. And if they were like human beings in a lot of ways, they would all freeze to death. But they understand, as we understand, that in community is warmth, safety, and love. So during the darkest hours, these little animals come together to hatch their eggs in community. And they survive until the next season. What a beautiful thing. What a beautiful creature. Good morning, everyone. And welcome to the Federated Church of Sturbridge and Fisdale. Know that you are welcome here. No matter where you are in your faith journey, there is a place for you here. And we love the fact that you join us. Know that we are a safe community where you can just hang out and be yourself. And if anybody says you can't, get a penguin. They'll protect you. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, we willingly and lovingly place ourselves here before you, knowing that what we're about to experience may change our lives. Lord, we gather to hear your message your words, and in faith, we come not knowing where else to go. Lord, welcome in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor David. For those of you out there who may not know, when we have a rummage sale, we collect the ugliest tie, and that's the tie the pastor has to wear the next day. <laughs> that's what the whole thing is about, in case you don't know. Uh, let's see, we have a few announcements to make. Uh, the men's yard sale yesterday took in $304. That's very good. The rummage sale... Uh, I never saw, I've been around a long time. I've never seen so many things in the rummage sale. And the rummage sale grossed $1,860 and netted $1,647. And it's all from things people didn't want. All right, that was wonderful. Um, the pumpkins, I have no uh, idea what today's pumpkin count is, but. Uh, huh? 2200. So far, $2,200 from yesterday. From yesterday. Oh, just yesterday? Wow, that's good. And uh, Andrew is going to talk about the rock voices that are coming this afternoon. So, yep. uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, just a Music in the patch update. There will be rock voices, a community choir from um, Auburn and uh, the surrounding Central Mass area will be coming to share their fall program with us at 1 p.m. in the pumpkin patch outside. Uh, I will be playing before and after their appearance. So, um, so it'll be a uh, interesting musical afternoon and I look forward to seeing some of you there and some of you who are not here and out there in Cyberland. I hope yeah. to see some of you as well. Oh, uh, I'm yep. sorry. Uh, my apologies. Uh, one more announcement uh, about choir. Choir will be starting up in a uh, more official um, fashion.
satisfaction than we are currently. Please watch out for an email coming up quickly. And the plan is that we will rehearse on the first week of November for our second week of November first performance. So that is the plan. Uh, let's see if anybody doesn't know what rock voices are. I never heard of them. They came two years ago to the pumpkin patch. They were amazing. It's rock and roll music. Uh, they have great voices. And if I had the time, I would join the, that particular group. It was so wonderful. Chris, did you want to say more about it? For those who, yeah. It's a variety of music. Thank you, Chris. And it's from all over the United States, the Eastern, Un Eastern and Central United States. Um, different, and it's all under this group called Rock Voices. It's not just rock and roll, of course, but it is amazing. And, and we get to see it for free right there. So please bring a lawn chair, come and sit and enjoy. Bring a blanket too, it's cold. All right, I think we are ready to go. The opening hymn, to, oh, pardon me, call to worship. Excuse me. Ah, let's settle down. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes it boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name forever. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Let us place ourselves before God in praise and song. Amen. Amen. Please open your hymnal to page 530. I've got peace like a river. Please be seated. Let us read the prayer of confession together. Let us confess our trespasses and sins to God. Merciful God, I come before you filled with sorrow and seeking forgiveness. This week was especially tiring as the world pulled me into its busy work. I lost track of your ways and wandered in the darkness. This world seems to be in constant chaos, and I jump in and forget the lessons you have taught me. Lord, I seek forgiveness for the times I was short with others, 
and myself. Forgive my moments of doubt and fear. Take me by the hand and show me a better way. Brothers and sisters, Jesus pronounced that we are forgiven. Let us boldly enter the world and serve all of God's, God's children together. Praise be to God. Amen. Let the children come forward, because this is where Jesus has called them. You know, I was thinking on my way in this morning that God sends us a lot of messages if we're willing to listen and we have ears to hear and a heart and mind that is open. God sends us different tasks to do. But God doesn't expect us to be perfect. And that's something that we should always remember. It's not being perfect that God calls us to do or wants for us. What God does want for us is that we keep on trying to get better. We keep trying no matter what happens. I was listening to Andrew's playing this morning. And Andy plays absolutely beautifully, doesn't he? And you hear the love that he has for music as he plays this instrument. Well, Andy didn't develop these skills overnight. It took a week. <laughs> <laughs> and he bought a CD. And he went on YouTube. And then it took him about 10 years. Many hours of practicing. Huh? And in only 10 years, I'm surprised. And in only 10 years, look at him. <laughs> wow. He's phenomenal. He kept trying. Every once in a while, even today, after many years of practice and being a professional the way he is, even today he may hit a bad note. But that doesn't stop him. He keeps on trying. He tries to get better every time he sits down at the organ or the piano or whatever instrument that is calling to his heart and mind at that time. It's the same thing with us. If you truly want something, then you have to expect that you're going to have road bumps. You're not going to have total success off the bat because worthwhile things take time practice, and a willingness to keep trying. And that's all that God truly wants you to do. So, keep trying. Keep trying to get better. Keep trying to love each other greater. Keep sharing. And keep knowing that God does love you. And God hears you. And God will sit there with you as you keep on trying. I promise. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for the new skills that you give us and we acquire along the way. Instill in us the courage to keep trying and not give up. And let us understand that it is with you that we get better each and every day.
In Jesus' name, amen. Today's New Testament lesson is from Hebrews chapter 7, verses 23 to 28. Furthermore, the former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners and exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. This he did once for all when he offered himself for the law appoints as high priests those who are subject to weakness, but the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. And the gospel lesson is from Mark chapter 10, verses 46 through 52. They came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So, throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. Here ends the reading. Okay, I don't know who's in charge of the music committee, but I guess you can yell at me now. <laughs> Good morning. Join me in prayer as you are able. Merciful and loving God, your church has assembled. Some are present and others are viewing from afar. We seek the presence of your Holy Spirit to be amongst and upon us. Lord, we seek to quiet, we seek to quiet our hearts and minds from the world and place ourselves before you. Holy One, as we lovingly come to you and you to us, we ask that you open our hearts and minds to you during this time. In the name of Christ Jesus, we ask and pray. Amen. Interesting story today, isn't it? In today's gospel reading, we should be aware that today we witness the last of Jesus' miracles as recorded by Mark. The healing of the blind man. 
is an unfolding story of true discipleship, and it's a call story. Looking at the reading, I believe that there are three points that we need to make space for this morning. One is, then Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do to you, for you? The second one is, Jesus said to him, go, your faith has made you well. And the third, immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. Important lines and verses to make room for it in our hearts and minds. But even before we get to those, there's something that even we should grab a hold of a little bit before. You see, before that, we need to take a look at what was Jesus saying and doing. Mark leads us down some very interesting pathways. We once again witness Jesus on the road, preaching the good news and doing do good works, being empathetic and compassionate. Here on the road is where Jesus is. Not in the synagogue, not in a house, not in the same town over and over again. Part of me wonders if Jesus lived in our day and age, what would his travels look like? Would one day he be in Boston, the next day he would be in New York, and the next day he would be in California? Is that how that gospel would unfold? Maybe, but maybe not. Maybe one day Jesus would be in Sturbridge. The next, he's in Southbridge. The next, he's in Dudley. You see, Jesus' wandering was not hurried. It was focused. It was directed. He knew where he was going, but not truly hurried. If you read the gospel and you watch it unfold in front of you, he's talking to people. He's gathering. He's delivering the good news. And here on the road, the blind man cries out to Jesus, and what do we hear? The crowd attempting to silence him. But no, Bartimaeus will not be quieted. He knows what he wants. He knows what he needs. And our attention is called for as well. For here is an outsider. Although lost in the crowd, is eager but some contact with Jesus. And Jesus hears him and calls to him. In fact, three times in verse 39, call is used. Listen to the verse. Jesus stood still and said, call him here. And they called the blind man, saying, take heart, get up. He is calling you. See, it all begins with a call. The first call was not from Jesus. The first call was from the blind person. Lord, help me. This is what happens when we do this. Jesus knows what it is that we need and what it is that we want. But Jesus also wants you to understand what it is that you need and what it is that you want. So we call, Lord, help me. Have you ever heard that call? Have you heard that call come from your own voice, your own mind, your own heart? And when you hear said that, whether it was Lord, help me, or Lord, I don't know what to do, you receive the response. In some way, somehow, if your heart and mind was open and your prayer was true, you received response. And these responses come in many different forms. And many of these responses are going to require action. A go and do type of event. As Barnabas approaches Jesus, Jesus asks him, what do you want me to do for you? 
Here is a question that Jesus asks each and every one of them, us as we place ourselves before him in direct, open, and honest prayer. Whether you're an insider or an outsider, this question underlines the importance of getting our deepest desires straight, knowing exactly what one wants and needs in that moment. Last week, we looked at James and John being asked this exact same question by Jesus. However, they were asking for the wrong things. They were asking for things like personal glory, status, and power. And here, we have an individual asking for the right things. And he wanted it in the right way. He was not secret, secretly looking for power, social or economic standing. All he wanted to be was healed. And in his faith, he knew that Jesus could and would heal him. Prayer. Prayer is our deepest, our soul's deepest and most sincere desires. They are words that are unsaid. And in many ways, they're not expressed. And in some cases, they're unexpected. Barnabas did express his prayer persistently, plainly, and honestly. And immediately he got his sight back. In prayer, we lovingly place ourselves in Barnabas' shoes. And Jesus asked, What do you want from me? I'll ask this again. Have you heard that question? Have you heard Jesus asking, what do you want from me? <coughs> I hope so. And what do you have to say back? Because you see, this is an honest and direct question. And it deserves an honest and direct answer. Are we like James and John? Or are we like the blind man? As we come before our high priest, are our prayers truly open? Are our prayers truly honest and full of heartfelt desire? Or do they fall flat? Is it that we're seeking personal gains? This is a question that we should ask ourselves before we place ourselves before Christ. So, Jesus' question is direct and right to the heart of the issue. And now he gets his sight back. Jesus' next comment Go, your faith has made you well. On the surface, may seem to be dismissive. Go. Your faith has made you well. Except I believe that we know Jesus was, is never dismissive. These were also words that were used before in Mark. When the woman was suffering from a hemorrhage, she touched Jesus' robe, and Jesus told her, Go, your faith has made you well, or it has saved you. In this case, Barnabas cry out to Jesus, even though he may not have under, fully understood who Jesus was. He understands enough. His soul will not allow him to remain silent, and he persists even though he's told to keep silent. He is bold, and he is clearly focused on what he wants most in this world. Together with this understanding, that Jesus could and would grant it. These are attitudes that Jesus holds up and actions that Jesus holds up as faith. So our attitudes and our actions are a lot in it. Jesus' response, even though it does seem, kind of seem dismissive, is 
what he's telling him is there are no strings attached to here. It's your heart and your mind that Jesus is hearing, just like it was for him. And there are no strings attached. As Jesus does for all of us, when we call out, he answers us. When we answer, call out in faith, he answers us in a response. No one is ever turned away. But action is going to be required and needed. When our hearts and minds are open in faith, boldness, and possibilities, Jesus, as, a high, as our high priest, responds. And as Jesus responds, we too must be ready to respond back. You see, the gift was not only the gift of sight, but it was also about the call that we talked about earlier. He may not have understood everything. And he doesn't have all the answers. But he knows he must follow Jesus. Immediately he regained his sight and he followed him on the way. His sight was returned and he became a disciple. Once you are called and respond to this call, there's no such thing as going back to the way you were before. Christ hears. Take heart, there is an advocate that hears and knows our soul's deepest desires and truest, our deepest and truest desires. All you have to do is answer the call to follow him on the way. Let's put this all together. We're going to be called. Because when you call Jesus... Jesus calls for you to respond. How do you respond? Now, understand something, and I think it's very important that we understand this. A call from Christ does not have to be a downer. God, God in Jesus is not going to ask you to do anything that you cannot do. Everything that God will ask you to do, you can do. It just takes the faith in moving it forward. So, we become followers of Christ. That doesn't lo mean lose your sense of humor, people. Following Christ should be enjoyable. Okay. Okay. It's not always going to be fun, and it's not always going to be games, but it should be enjoyable. There are going to be challenges along the way to follow Christ. You're going to have stumbling blocks, not set there by God or by Christ, but set there by us, ourselves, or set there by others, and God will help you remove them. But God also wants to see your response to these. With me, I received my call to Christ the same way we all do as adults, I hope, which is placing myself before him, asking questions. Is this what you want me to do? And then get ready for the answer. Because God will tell you, yes, no, maybe. But God will also tell you, no, go and do. Every single person that we meet is facing the exact same dilemmas that we're facing today. In some form or another. So many people that we run into, whether it's out in the pumpkin patch, whether it was down in the rummage sale, are looking for something. Now, they may not be like Bartimaeus. They may not be, excuse me, they may not be like me. That my call, Bartimaeus' call, was loud, it was forceful, it was got attention. Most people that you're going to run into 
Your call is going to be soft. It could just be a look of their eyes. It could just be the way they're standing. They need help. We all need help. And what are they waiting for? They're waiting for an honest, heartfelt, open invitation to come. We need to take heart in many things. Jesus has answered you and answered your prayers. But have we answered our calls? Like Barnabas, more than just words are needed. Actions are called for, as I said. We're holistic beings. So we must answer these calls in heart, with an open heart, in mind. We must be mentally ready to respond. And in body, we must be willing to go. With open heart and mind and body, the spirit has fertile ground to work with, and everything that your hearts desire is possible. It's about faith and acting in faith, even if you don't understand. It's about love and heart. It's about mending wrongs and building bridges to put things back together again. It's about open invitation to come, to see, to experience. It's about taking our true and honest prayers to Christ, our high priest. Let us go forward in faith, knowing that God has got this, and he's got us too. In Jesus' name, amen. Our next hymn will be, He Touched Me, number 564. God is always so good to us. He gives us whatever we need if we're willing to have the courage to ask for it, holding nothing back. We're called to do the same thing. Not because God needs money. God doesn't need money. 
But his earthly mission does, and that's why we give. We give so we can support the church. We give so we can help the poor. We give because we're called to give. So at this time, I invite everyone that's at home, please hit your PayPal button as you're able. And for those of us that are sitting in the sanctuary, after service is over, you'll find a collection box in the back. Please feel free to make your morning offering as you're able. At this time, let our morning offering commence. Gracious and holy God, we thank you for the gifts that you will give to us so willingly and lovingly. We place this offering before you as a token of all that you give given to us. May the wisdom of our leaders use these gifts wisely to put forth your mission and to lead your children home. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. One of the greatest gifts that God has gives that God gives to us so willingly and lovingly is the gift of community. God knows that life is not easy. God knows that we are going to be challenged. And God knows that we're going to have moments of celebration. So he placed us in community that we may carry one another when times are hard. And we can celebrate with each other when times are good. At this time, I invite the congregation to place any prayers of joys or concerns before us so that we may be with you during this time. from foot surgery and uh, I'd like to thank my church family for their prayers and their uh, love and support this past week. She be is she behaving herself? <laughs> Let us keep Loretta in our prayers as we go through this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Deb did very well with her five days of very light chemotherapy this past week. She had no ill effects. In fact, maybe some of you saw her at the rummage sale a little bit Friday evening and yesterday and also in the pumpkin patch. She's really doing well, gaining energy every day. Thank you for your prayers. Keep them coming. Praise God. And praise God for you too as well. And may you guys continue to get back in your strength back, in your rest, in Jesus' name.
yesterday was a special day in the Favreau household. In addition to working at the uh, pumpkin patch, we had four, count them, four generations of Favreau men and boys at our house. We had Dale, the grandpapa. We had Chris, our son. We had Jake, our grandson. And we had Calvin, 11 months old, and having a wonderful time in our living room. And it was just a very special day. Praise so, God. Praise God. Um, I had a surprise on Friday when my car stopped working. Uh, sorry, it was Thursday. You want me to hold it over here? Um, I called for help, and I got an answer from Glenna and Harry, and I was able to make it to my rehearsal and then my concert, and I just really appreciate um, the help that the church family has. And the concert was fun, and it was real, and there was an audience, and they clapped. That was the first time I've heard applause like that in a long time. So, um, and the other not less important thing is that Lila turned 15 in the middle of all this, mm -hmm. and she had the company of her father, thank heavens, <laughs> because I had a conflict and it was unacceptable. But there it is. <laughs> thank you. You want to say something, Bob? No, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> you got to love honesty. No, I got nothing. <laughs> Let us join our hearts and minds together. God is with you. Let us pray. Lord, we place ourselves before you. You've heard our joys, you've heard our sorrows, and you've heard our joys. We thank you for being present. We thank you for hearing us and sharing with us. Lord, during this time of prayer, we ask that you help the church. Help us to become the body of Christ you see and you desire and you want us to become. Lord, lead us to the disciples that need to be called and help us to hear their prayers, their sorrows, their loneliness. Lord, open our hearts and minds to the possibilities of what can be and forgive us for what went sideways. Lord, it is not only here where we need your help and we, we need your presence. It's in the world. Our world seems to be going sideways, Lord, in so many ways. Brothers are fighting with brothers. Families are fighting with families. Governments are fighting with other governments. Politicians are intentionally tearing this country apart. And yet we know that you have this. We know that you see, and we know that truth will prevail no matter how long it takes. Lord, we ask for the strength to fight and to stand for what is right. And we ask for the strength to stand against what is wrong. Lord, as we go through this week, we ask that you watch over our leaders here in the church. Guide them with wisdom, love, and care, and empathy. For our leaders in our towns and in our state, and in our federal government, and around the world, grant them the wisdom to know that they're supposed to be representing the people, not themselves, not their self-interests. Lord, you know the pandemic is out of control around the world and we ask for your help in, with cures. Help those that cannot understand the facts, accept them, guide them. But Lord, there's also much to be thankful for. We're thankful for this day. 
We thank you for the sun. We thank you for this fellowship and community. We thank you for this place to live that we call home. We ask that you guide us in all we say and do. Help us to be the welcoming community that you want us to be. All of this, Lord, we hand you in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, as one, let us recite the prayer that Jesus taught so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our closing hymn this morning. Oops. Our closing hymn this morning will be Spirit, number 249.
my dear brothers and sisters, as we depart from this sacred space, my prayer for you is this. May God protect you, shield you, and keep you from all harm. May the examples that Christ placed before us be guiding lights and signposts on how best to proceed. And may the Holy Spirit help you to keep your minds and hearts open to the possibilities of what we can become as faithful disciples. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.